This week, we're getting in the spirit. The Lights of Diker Heights, last minute sweet stocking stuffers, how you can help Santa make an early delivery, and learn about the three New Yorkers who invented Christmas in America. Without them, there'd be no sleigh, no reindeer, no St. Nick. Plus, don't know what to do with the in-laws? We've saved the day because we've planned your perfect Saturday. Happy holiday! I am Jacques Torres, Tony on New York Star, now! Merci! <laughs> Mommy, the New York starts right now! It is the most wonderful time of the year. And for others affected by Sandy, times are tough and budgets are tight. We are gonna show you how you can make a difference during this season of giving by supporting local businesses and by helping to get presents to kids who otherwise might not have anything to open under the tree. You can still shop for your last minute gifts and make a difference. In fact, everything featured in this show is made right here in New York. But before we get to all that, we want to take you to one of the most magical places in the Tri-State come holiday time. And it won't even cost you a dime. Some call Diker Heights in Brooklyn the undisputed capital of Christmas pageantry because it's not just one house that puts on the dazzling show, it's the whole neighborhood. A tradition that has endured for 25 years, locals and tourists alike flock to these blocks where one can truly get in the holiday spirit. Many of the displays are done professionally, which can cost a pretty penny, up to 20 grand. Now, for the best views, head to 11th and 83rd, wear comfortable shoes, and be sure to bring the little ones. Now, the lights are amazing, but there is a more historic reason we decided to start the show here in Diker Heights. After all, it was our very first settlers that brought St. Nick to New York. Tony, in the 1620s, New Amsterdam was founded by merchants who were brought here by sailors. Now, the patron saint of sailors is St. Nicholas. I mean, it's not Santa Claus, it's actually the patron saint of sailors? He's the patron saint of sailors. But these sailors were so reluctant to give up their saint, they made their new home, New Amsterdam, his home. Born Nicholas of Myra, now a part of Turkey, he lived from the year 270 to 350 AD and is in fact the patron saint of New York. Some say he was the model for Santa Claus because he strongly believed in giving gifts to the poor and was known for leaving coins and shoes which were left out for him, a tradition that is still practiced in England today. But how did he evolve from St. Nicholas to Santa here in New Amsterdam? We're in Diker Heights, too hilly for farming, but imagine the rolling hills all around us, covered in thick forest, which is where the Dutch would come to harvest the trees that allowed them to build their homes, their businesses, their city. The neighborhood is called Diker Heights because of the dikes that were built here to drain the meadow. But it wasn't until the mid 19th century that homes were built here. And it was during that same time period when Christmas, as we know it, began to take shape. Now it's amazing to think that Christmas wasn't declared a federal holiday until 1870, and colonial Christmas in New York was hardly a holiday for children. In fact, the emphasis of Christmas as a magical time for children wasn't established until the 19th century. And we have three New Yorkers to thank for creating many of the traditions that Americans associate with the holiday to this day. Before the 19th century, Christmas wasn't celebrated like it is today. Sure, there is still charity going on, but this is all it was in the 18th century. There were no gifts, there were no grand celebrations. It was about the wealthy giving to the poor and the poor dependent on that food and money quite often to get through the winter. What begins to happen, specifically in 1809, when Washington Irving on December 25th publishes his Knickerbocker History of New York, the change starts. It was in this great work that Irving reinvented St. Nick. The once scrawny Santa was transformed into a big jolly fellow. And it was the great writer who invented his sleigh full of presents, led by eight tiny horses. They weren't even reindeer yet. This is the beginning of a trend we're seeing in the 19th century. 
With a serious depression in 1817 and the wealthy no longer able to give as they had in the past and the poor needing help more than ever and not getting it, we have Christmas Day riots. Happens again the next year. Once you imagine you're at home, your children are scared and you pen a poem to them that you published in 1823 called Twas the Night Before Christmas. And that's exactly what Clement Clark Moore did. It has been called arguably the best known verses ever written by an American. And A Visit from St. Nick was first published anonymously in 1823. But Moore wrote it years before to reassure his children during those Christmas riots. He attributed the sounds of violence outside to Santa by creating the idea that it was Saint Nick arriving on the rooftop instead. But how would horses get on a rooftop? Well, you could say the writer who grew up in Elmhurst, Queens had quite an imagination. Don't worry about that noise on the rooftop. Don't worry about the noise in the chimney. It is not a robber coming down to steal from us. It is Jolly St. Nick, now towed by eight tiny reindeer. He made them reindeer and he acknowledged the great German tradition that's beginning to evolve and named two of the reindeer Donner and Blitzen instead of Thunder and Lightning, which is what they mean in English. And all of a sudden we have a whole new tradition starting of give gifts among the family and stay home. The Germans, they bring us the Christmas tree. One of the greatest symbols of Christmas in America today, the tree is brought to us by the largest immigrant group to come to New York in the 19th century, and it's everywhere now. Now when it comes to Santa's image, some people credit Coca-Cola with inventing it, as they popularized the jolly, rotund, bearded character in a campaign in the 1930s. But this is not the case. In fact, it was a Civil War cartoonist who worked for Harper's Weekly, Thomas Nast. Born in Germany, moved to New York in the mid-19th century, he drew the very first images of St. Nick as we know him now, red suit and all. It's Thomas Nast who comes up with the idea that he's got a little toy workshop in the North Pole where he's making the toys for children. This is something completely new in the middle of the 19th century. It took those 50 years and these three great men to evolve the tradition that all Americans who celebrate Christmas now recognize these three men came from New York. Christmas as we know it is a New York tradition through and through. Coming up, we visit our friends who were hit hard in Red Hook and hook up with some kids with our special delivery from Santa. Plus, how to kill a day with the in-laws. New York's coolest neighborhood could use your support.